the updated events dashboard. Haha, <laughs> you are gonna love this one. Elliot from Live Webinar here. If you're struggling to set up your first event or wondering how to change certain options of your already existing webinar, then grab yourself a drink and get settled in. You will learn how to use all the basic functionalities of the dashboard and how to set up your first webinar. If you have any other questions after this video, you can contact our knowledgeable and lovely support team in the email link in the description below. Scheduling a webinar is really easy. There are three types of webinars to choose from, scheduled, permanent, and evergreen. A scheduled event will have a predetermined and a fixed date. A permanent room will be open all the time and an evergreen event has content that you can share and will always be available. First off, you need to pick a name for your event. Then you will also need to select a date and if you like, you can create an event agenda. Once you've set a name, date, and the main navigation bar will then be displayed. You can configure your event step by step or you can jump into the section you're interested in. Select the short tag that corresponds to future events when scheduling an event. For example, if you schedule a webinar about marketing, use the tag marketing. This option is particularly beneficial for businesses that host a large number of online events. Tags will assist in sorting them and the browser will quickly facilitate locating events on relevant subjects. In the details tab of the dashboard, you will find the name of your event, the room ID and the room browser address. You can view what time the event starts, in which time zone and the attendee information. Moving on to the presenters tab, here you will be able to assign presenters if you wish or you can leave it as is. In the registration tab, you can have the ability to enable an event form. Creating an effective landing page for your webinar is crucial for efficient lead generation. You can either select from not using a form, choosing from your saved forms or designing a completely new form. There are three options that you can toggle on or off which allow registrants to join multiple sessions. Below is the section to set up reminders for your event. In the appearance tab, here you can create templates, select a room image or have a room banner. I have created an in-depth tutorial on how to use the appearance feature. It's linked in the description below. Under the tracking tab here, you will be able to embed third-party codes such as Facebook Pixel and Google Analytics. If you would like to make money from your webinars, who wouldn't? You can set up paid webinars by integrating them easily on the billing page. I've also created another in-depth video and the link is in the description below as well. To prevent Zoom bombing or other potential cyber threats, the security tab has some interesting features. For example, you can password protect your room, you can set up a waiting room, and for that little bit of extra security, you can doubly encrypt your room. You will also find the account event tokens here where you can name your token and set a limit for the access tokens. Lastly, the option to toggle the expiration time on or off can be configured here as well. I've saved the best for last. The most important tab is the advanced section. Here you will be able to set up the initial audio mode, whether that will be a discussion, presentation, raised hand or classroom. You will be able to select your room layout, whether you would like to have it in full screen or webinar mode. You can select which type of room template you prefer, either webinar or meeting mode. A very useful feature is the addition of notifications. Here you can select if you would like to send thank you emails and also to disable the notifications. In the before and after meeting section, you can toggle the knock knock option on or off. Personally, I keep it off as there can be quite a lot of attendees and that knock knock can get quite annoying. For the participants waiting in the lobby, you can also set up a countdown timer, whether or not emails are shown on the agenda and create a leave page URL. Some handy features to the room you can toggle on or off are the audio and video settings to start automatically, chat moderation, a private one-to-one -one chat, enable the location of your participants and show which type of device is being used by the participants. As a subsection, you can decide if the participants can see one another as well. 
And lastly, you can select files from your storage to auto start upon entering the room or whilst waiting for the event to start. Once you're satisfied with your final configuration, always remember to save or update your settings. To view the updated version of your event, it's visible under the Scheduled Events tab on the main dashboard. You can edit the parameters of your configuration at any point by clicking on the three dots to the right of the event and selecting the option Edit. To join your event, click on the Join option and you will be redirected to the event slash room. Now you should be more than ready to use the updated events dashboard and know how to set up your first webinar. Seeing as you stuck around this far, why not subscribe to stay up to date with all the latest features, tips and tricks. Now I bet you're curious how the appearance feature looks like in action. Why don't you check out the video over here?